Hey y'all, Coach in the Firehead got Chris and Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about Stacy's contribution to the clock. Okay, I've heard a lot of it over the past, since yesterday, and I've been wondering what it was. It's understandable because we're going to learn something about the clock that I don't think it's taught. I ain't going to say nobody knows it. Somebody may have figured it out. But it's, it's something about the clock that we don't learn in school. And I think many people don't know and will be very, very, very excited to learn about. And the thing about it, um, I want to say again, this is Stacy's contribution. So we want to back up to actually how we got to this point. Okay. You know, we want to kind of tell the story, give, give a little bit of the testimony. If that's, if that's all right with you, Stacy. Mm hmm well, how it started was we were talking about the video that we had produced on yesterday. Right. The one talking about is Israel at war? Yes, absolutely. I was the one and we introduced the new revision to the clock face. Right. Right. And then after we, you know, got it all done and I appreciate all you guys help with that. You you helped a lot with that very important video. But after that video was over, Stacy and I was having a discussion and she asked the question, how does the clock help you tell time? How no. does the clock calendar? The clock. I didn't say calendar or, or any celestial clock calendar. We're talking about the clock clock, the same clock you learned in the first grade oh, clock. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she had okay, so and and the question she was asking, I, I I'm in memory space now, but what she was asking was, how does a clock work in relationship to the celestials that would allow you to tell time? In other words, pull up the face of a clock. Okay, so. What time does this clock say? Six o'clock. Now, this clock is telling you what time it is. Right. But what if it didn't have hands on it? Then we wouldn't be able to use it. Okay, it would, it would be useless as far as the clock is concerned, right? Right. But our father never planned for you to use the hands, did he? What did he plan for you to use? Use the celestials. Okay, so if all you're given is the face of the clock and the stars in heaven, the sun, the moon, and the stars. How do you tell time with it? I, I, maybe this is not new and maybe everybody knows this. And if anybody knows this, it would be you, Chris. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to think about it. It's not a rush, you know, this is video. We can edit out all your thinking space. You can even play some uh, Jeopardy music in the background while you think about it. If all you were given were this picture, And the sun, the moon, and the stars. You can speed up time. We can take you over to um, Stellarium so you can, you know, look at what the moon is doing at this precise moment. Look at what the sun is doing at this precise moment. Look at where the stars are at in relationship to the earth and all of that. How would you be able to tell what hour, what season, and what day you're on? Stacy figured all of this out yesterday in conversation just casual conversation she's just asking questions ask this question mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the question she asked mm -hmm. and of course she wasn't looking at this clock she was actually looking at this one our revision of the clock that we're working on right and she asked how does this clock how do you use this clock to tell time the problem with this clock is it doesn't have the information on it you can't really you can it's a little bit tough and we're going to come back to this because there's some very key information here in this clock but we have to get there first this video is brought to you by the celestial clock calendar get your celestial clock calendar at coachingafight.shop or follow the links in the description below all right, so let's back up, cause this is this is very important, guys. I mean, this you guys need to stick around to the end. <laughs> I understand that I'm 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 doing a lot of suspense here, but if you follow the channel, 
I kind of want things to sink in. And, and if you don't, there's two points I want you to understand is what we're about to learn and who, who gave this contribution. And we want to give, you know, our Father in Heaven the pure credit for it, right? Right. You know, just like the clock itself. We give our Father in Heaven, you know, credit for all of this. But, you know, Chris, you had a big part in it. And you should be recognized, right? Okay. Well, so we want to make sure that that part is brought out. That, you know, Stacy, this is Stacy's part. This is a big part. And you're going to see it in a minute. All right, so how does it work? First, we start talking about the moon. And what I explained to Stacy is that she could go outside and look at the phase of the moon to determine, and you're already shaking your head, you already know. Yeah, I'm starting she, to see it. Yeah, she could use she could use the phase of the moon itself to figure out what time of the month we was in. Right. Okay? So here's a pop quiz. You can pop that over there and paint if you want to. But the, the question for you, Christian, is if you're given a, I'm going to make it easy on you. I'm going to say a 25% waxing crescent moon. What time, what, where, where, where does the moon hand point on that clock? Talk them through it now. They want to so, hear. They need to hear your voice. Starting over here at the beginning of the month, twenty-five percent. Wax and crescent, I said, right? Right. Okay. So. Wax and crescent means it's getting bigger, and that's what he's showing you. It getting bigger. So twenty-five percent would be about right, right there. Okay, and I meant to say fifty percent, but you're good. Keep going. Okay, so where is the hand pointing? So then the hand would be pointing right there. Absolutely. So that's pretty easy, right? Right. So that's telling you that you're at the beginning of the month. Right. Right. You did, of course, the hand down here, this is telling you there's eight days before you get to that point. From here to here is eight days, right? Right. According so to you, e huh? So you can split in between those to find how long until the next Sabbath. Day. You're almost about four. Yeah, you're almost about, uh, if that's eight days, then that's what, about three? You're on the third day of the month. Right. Mm-hmm. See how that works, Day? Yes. And you understood that yesterday. Yes, when you walked me through it, yes. Right. But then she asks, well, okay, what about the time of day? How does that work? Now, the time of day seems a bit more tricky, but... And it's because this clock doesn't have the necessary information on it. See, this is why we don't get this, because our clock faces don't have this on it. I ain't saying the clock is wrong. It's just missing this part, because we have hands. Right. If we didn't have hands... Then we would be able to figure it out. Wait, let's go. Okay, so... Here's a clock. But the difference between this clock and what we normally see is it has 24 hours on the face instead of 12. Right. And but we still have the 12 at the top of the clock where we're used to. Mm -hmm. So long story short, you walk outside with your clock and you can imagine you as a person here. Or here with your clock, whatever, what you're going to we're going to put you in the middle here. And you have your clock in your hand facing the south. Right. Right? You have the east on your left side, and on your right side is the west. Mm -hmm. Now you want to know what time it is. Right? Right. So, but notice on this 24-hour clock, you have six on the right and six on the left. It says 18 there because it's military time, but it's 6 p.m. Right. Well, the 6 p.m., if, if we've done this right, we might have to flip it. But if we've done this right, the 18 would represent sunset, and the 6 would represent sunrise. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're looking toward the south, what you would do is you would look at the direction of which the sun is. Oh, okay. So, and we could, and so we'll do a vice versa. 
if I tell you that it is four o'clock, where would the sun be at in the sky? Four o'clock in the afternoon, then the sun would be over here. Right. And so that's how your clock tells you time. That's how with the information on this piece of paper, we can use the celestials to know exactly what time it is. But what if we can't see the stars and we have to rely on celestial data? Let's see how that'll work. And we'll go to one of the celestial programs. So we come over for today. At this moment, it tells us that the sun has a 49 degree altitude and an azimuth of 164 degrees. Now, Chris, could you plot that on this? Let's see. I'm going to go back to 6 a.m. Just to, just to help you out a little bit. All right, at sunrise, the, az the altitude was 0 degrees and the azimuth was 98 degrees. All right, so if the sun was at zero degrees at sunrise, that means that 6 a.m. is zero degrees, right? Right. So we can fill that in as a zero there. It means it will be 90 degrees at 12 a.m., right? Mm-hmm. 180 at 6 p.m. But the altitude at our current time is 50 degrees. So what time is it? So if 6 is at 0, 12 is at 90, 9 would be at about 45. So it would be just after the 9. So I'd say it was about 9.30. Mm -mm. That would be right if you had a 24-hour clock, but you don't. Right. So put the hand on the clock pointing in that same 50-degree direction. Or you could come back and put it on this clock in a 50-degree direction. Okay, so this is zero, 90, 45, about 50 right here. Mm -hmm. So just before 11 o'clock. And if you look at the time, it says what? 12 o'clock, and that's accounting for daylight savings time. <laughs> so there you go. Mm -hmm. See how that works? Surprisingly easy. So you have to have you have to be able to see the sun um, in order to do the calculations this way. Or know where they are. So right? what if it's um, a cloudy day and has been cloudy all day, you know, without being able to see the sun, would you still be able to um, use this clock calendar? Well, hopefully you gather this information when you had sun. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to have to do that with the equinoxes, with everything. You're going to have to have the visual aid of the celestials. If you got clouds, you got problems. Right. right. But, you know, praise our Father in heaven, you do get a peek at the sun every once in a while. Right. And, and if you were in a distressed situation where you couldn't go outside all of the time, mm -hmm. all you really t needed to do was to go out once and recalibrate your clock, mm -hmm. set the time, and then praise our Father in heaven, we may still have batteries, double-A batteries somewhere. Right. And, you know, we could just keep it running or, uh, you know, for the rest of the quarter when we'll have to do it again. You'll only have to do it every three months. You'll have to go out and actually get a visual on the moon just to keep it up there. Everything else will work for itself just as long as you. So the hands um, aren't necessarily needed um, in order to be able to tell time on a clock. Because it works the same way with the other one too, with the seasons. You just have to be able to see and recognize the stars with constellation the new moon is in mm -hmm. so you might need a um a sectant or something so that you can measure the angle of the stars okay how much they cost <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying that so you were saying that every clock is an enoch clock yes now that's going to be the second part of this this is this is this is huge stacy you'll find because this right here shows how how our clocks work you know how they can be used mm -hmm. but that still doesn't explain everything about it why isn't it a 24-hour clock why is the six all the way down here mm -hmm. we just talked about it being here and here right why does our clock only show 12 hours when we have 24 and so it's clearly not showing us hours so what are these numbers 
Were y'all able to find something about that? Uh, yes, we did. But I haven't set up for it yet. Um, I'm actually just now remembering this part here, which is yet even more important. Right. This this next part of this video is going to be how this discovery, Stacy's discovery, will prove that every clock is an Enoch clock. Hmm. I was on a roll yesterday, huh? You and the Elohim both. Yeah, y'all were doing it yesterday. <laughs> so let's just jump right into it and show you how every clock is an Enoch clock. I'm wondering if I should get into all of the verses, which would make the video too long. So what did Enoch say that was unique about the equinox? It's 364th day of the year or the first day of the year, the beginning of the season. How do you know that you're on March the 20th? If, the, if all of the calendar has been burnt up and we're 37 years down the road, how do you look at the sun, the moon, and or the stars to tell that you're on March the 20th? By the days and nights being equal? Absolutely. When the days and the nights are equal. But not only are the days and the nights equal, but the sun is also on a straight line east to west, right? Right. So before this day, the sun will be in this third gate up here, and it won't make a perfect path through the middle, right? Right. After this day, it'll be in the fourth gate, and it won't make a perfect path through the middle, right? Right. But on the equinox, right there at about March the 20th, the sun will travel straight from zero degrees east all the way through to exactly 100 degrees. And 80 degrees west. Mm -hmm. What else did he say about that day or that time period? And I give you a hint. There's a big nine sitting over here. That there would be nine hours to the day and nine hours to the night? Absolutely. On this day, when the sun rises at exactly 90 degrees, there will be exactly nine hours of daylight and exactly nine hours of nighttime, darkness. Mm -hmm. So let's plot that out and show what it looks like. Okay, so to make this clock right here look more like what Enoch was talking about, give it a mirror image and it'll look more like that. Okay, so that means that it's going it's got the 12 at the top and the 6 at the bottom, and both sides are counting back up to 12. Do you understand how that's how Abraham designed the clock based on what he understood from Enoch? All right, look. Notice here in the time, and I'm just noticing this part right here in this very second. Okay. But notice how you have 7 to 11 here. Oh. <laughs> Eight, starting to ten, get it nine nine. so right here you got nine to nine mm -hmm. and then when you're in this gate down here you're going to have when a, when you're going to have eight to ten okay when you're here you got seven to eleven and now i'm just going to pick a random day pick a random day stay um july 5th on july 5th where should the clock be pointing First, you have to know is how many hours you have on July 5th. Right. And according to what I'm looking at here, there are 14 hours. We'll round it. We'll round it to 14 hours. Okay. So all you have to do then is divide the parts into hours or the hours into parts. Mm-hmm. So each hour is two-thirds of a part. So each part will be 90 minutes. Each hour is 60 minutes. You go 60, 90 in the middle, 60 to this middle, and then 90. And so 14 hours would put you just about at the solstice. Which was the date your mom chose, I believe, was July the 5th. Mm -hmm. So considering that you have 364 points in here it's not really accurate enough to get you to the exact day but it can get you within 
a week. All it has to do is get you in the gate. Right. See how you're in the sixth gate there? Mm-hmm. So with that information, you're able to tell what gate you're in. But notice how the gates are already on here. Notice how the time is already on here. This is what Enoch was saying. There's your 9 to 9. There's your 8 to 10. There's your 7 to 11. And there's your 6 to 12. And that's why you have a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and a 12 on your clock. Proving that every clock is an Enoch clock. Right. Every clock is based on the gates. Those signs, those are not hours that it's telling you there. They're the gates. So this one over here is telling you it's pointing to the first gate. Mm-hmm. Because all you have to do to be able to see these gates is put a horizontal line in between those, and there's your gate. Absolutely. And I discovered this. <laughs> <laughs> you had some help, but well, praise our Father in heaven. Yes, absolutely. You asking questions. <laughs> She was the catalyst. She was the you you played you was the catalyst. You played a big part in it. So praise our Father in heaven. We got it from wherever it comes. But I believe this is brand new information. I don't, I don't think anybody really knows this. So mm-hmm. one thing that proves is that, like you always said, there's no stupid questions. <laughs> Told you he was gonna say. Right. <laughs> stupid questions lead to s- smart answers. Well, they did it. Well. Then what the stupid question? What are you talking about? All she asked is how do you use a clock to tell time? This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. So here we're looking at the updated version. Mm-hmm. About 12 hours later. You can tell we've been working a little bit. Right. Uh, Father in Heaven has been working with us a lot, adding um, some knowledge to all of this. And I think we're getting pretty close to having it complete. And I, I'll tell you guys, before you install this faceplate on your clock, you want to wait till you get to the, the final revision because I'm still working on this even as of today. Right. We got that shaded middle there we still have to complete. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys how we have incorporated Stacy's realization into this clock. Okay. All right. So you see we have degrees up here toward the top of the clock. Mm-hmm. Starting over here in the east where we have zero degrees and 180 degrees over here in the west. All right. You also see the addition of the percentage of the moon in here, as well as the times that Enoch gave us so that we could tell which gate or which season we're in. Mm-hmm. For instance, if you were to go outside with this piece of paper and imagine yourself standing in the middle and you look at the position of the sun, if it's directly over your head, you know that you're at high noon, right? Right. But what if the sun is over here at 144 degrees? This piece of paper will be able to tell you what time, what season you're in. Well, that will give you the time of day. Can you tell what time of day you're on? Help her out, Chris. So if you draw an imaginary line out to the sun, then you'll see that it intersects this ring here that shows 2, 3, 4 p.m. And you'll see that it says that it's about... 345, 350. Oh, 345. Right. right. So you would have to have this piece of paper in hand, position yourself in the middle, and as you said, draw the imaginary line, look down at the paper, and it should give you on or about the time that you're you're at. Right. So that's how our father intended for us to use the sun to tell time in the first place, just in its position in the sky relative to these 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, what if we was to change this sun into a moon? What time of the month are we in? We'll just say that's half. So if this is a half moon, is Mm -hmm. that correct? Then it would tell us that we are in. Now use the clock, use the clock. How would you use the clock in order to know what day of the month you're in? You know what time of day you're on. Okay, what time of the month are you on? Um, 
using that same imaginary line, we would be in winter, right? Mm -hmm. All right, help her out, Chris. So with this moon, we say it's about half, so that would be about 50%. So then you'd go along this percentage line. Oh, okay, I didn't say that. And then you would line up to where it says 50%. Well, see, I didn't know that was the moon. Okay, but it's fifty percent here, but it's fifty percent on the top too, or about. How do you, how do you know which one you're at? You have to look at the next day to see if it's a waxing or waning. Mm -hmm. Mm. No, no, actually, you see the shape of this moon. You right. See how you have vision or visibility on this side and this side. So if you was to come in here and start from this side. Your moon will start to fill in. All right. Something like that. So, where would your hand be pointing? So, if it's filling in from that side with the light from that side, then it would be on the waning side. And so, we would go out to this line here, and 50% would be about right here. So, we'd be right there on the calendar. And that's what the. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20th day. Okay, so you're on the 20th day of the month, getting ready for the Sabbath day. Right. So you tell that by the shape of the moon. So you have the shape of the moon that tells you what day of the month you're on, there about or the percentage showing. Mm -hmm. And then you have the position of the sun in the sky to tell you what time of day you're on. Right. And now you just need to know what season you're in. So you have to have all this information before. I mean, you have to know what a waning gibbous is. You have to know what a waning crescent is. Um, you have to know. Um, no, you don't. You don't. No, okay. it just told you when you all you did was got a picture of the moon like this. You would be outside looking at it mm -hmm. and you just filled it in to make it look like that. So you took this, okay. and when you filled it in to look like that, you found out where the hand was pointing. Of course, it's a little bit more exaggerated here, a um, little bit more than 50%. So it's somewhere about right in there. But when you take your hour hand and point it up in that direction, it tells you that you're in the area where it's Wayne and Gibbous. Okay. In other words, the clock just taught you what Wayne and Gibbous means. All right. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing you would want out of this instrument, I'm going to call it from now on, is the season that you're in. Right. Well, for that, we would have to give you the time of sunrise and high noon. And just to show you how easy it truly is, I'm going to make it quick. I'm going to show that sunrise is about right there. I'm gonna, and I'm going to show that high noon is about right there. So, what season are you in? So, if sunrise is right there. And we're going to call that about, we'll say 12 degrees. If sunrise is at 12 degrees, what gate does that put you in? Um... Here's the gates right here. That puts you in, I'm going to say the third gate. The third gate, because you imagine yourself standing here. You're in the middle, and you're looking at the sun over there. And so you see that you're in the third gate, right? right? So that tells you you're either in autumn or you're in winter. Right. Well, either you're in early autumn or you're in late winter. Right. But if you just woke up from a coma, you have no idea. It's the same temperature in early autumn and late winter. Mm -hmm. and especially if you're in a desert with no trees, you won't be able to tell if what season you're in. I mean, it could be warmer tomorrow or it could be colder tomorrow and you won't be able to tell that way. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell, okay, are you in winter or are you in fall? Would you then use the high noon time? 
You need the high noon time because it's on the alanema. Mm -hmm. So it's also shifting back and forth throughout the year. And so you can use it to tell which season you're in. And because it's high noon is falling before 12 o'clock, you know that you are in on this side in this quarter here. Mm -hmm. So with the degrees of the sun at sunrise and the degrees of the sun at high noon, you can tell what quarter you're in. Right. So in other words, you can send a fifth grader out there with this piece of paper and understanding. And he can look at the sun, the moon, and the relative position of the stars. And tell you what day and time it is. And what season we're in. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. We're getting ready for the solar eclipse today. We're calling this the eclipse draft because we haven't gotten the middle completed yet that will come out of the uh, latter chapters of Enoch's book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. But we did want to use this to demonstrate Stacy's discovery. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue to work on filling in this middle part before this 13th revision is complete for October the 16th in the year 2023. So if you want one for yourself, you can go to coachingthefight.shop and have your new clock calendar constructed and use the discount code TRUMPETS23 to get a 23% discount on your clock. And remember, these clocks are constructed by hand, guys. So you want to get ahead of the backlog. And with that, we're going to close this video out. And we'll see you in the next video. Shalawama. Shalawama.